you so fast? Very good, Bob. Good. Grumbled Sir Harry, moving smoothly with the interest of an unstoppable authority of the great clipper ship that under full sail. It can't be as bad as, as all that. Now, can it? Oh, they can, sir. They can. The Fox, following the magnified leap down the hall. You just can't get a hold of it, sir. What is it? And every time it's back, bigger, sir. In the study room, isn't it? Said Sir Harry, opening the door of that room and gazing inside. He stood stock still and his eyes widened a trifle because the sight before him, even for one so experienced in peculiar sights as he was startled by. Imagine a beautiful room, exotically furnished, impe impeccably maintained. Imagine the <laughs> occupant of that room. To be thin, tallish gentleman, dressed softly, faultlessly, in the best taste <laughs> possible, convinced of the whole thing, man and man in combination. To be a flawless example of the sort of styled perfection that only large amounts of money filtered through the generations of confident privilege can produce. Now I see the man with his hands and knees in one of the room's corners, staring at the bug eyed, the bug eyed on at the wall, and on the wall. Picture. Do do do! The mug, so hairy man manufactured. Isn't it, Jeff? Moaned the fox. Oh, isn't it? I'm so glad you could come, so hairy, said Archer. From his crouched position in the corner, it was difficult to make out his words as he spoke them through clenched teeth. Forgive me for not rising, but if I take my eyes off the thing or even blink, the whole Oh god damn it instantly the oh. vanished from the wall. Archie gave that an explicit sigh. <sighs> Clapped his hand to his face. Sat back heavily on the floor. Don't tell me where it got, where it got to now, Fox said. I don't want to know. I don't want to hear about it. Fox said nothing. Only touched his friendly hand on Sir Harry's shoulder and pointed to the center. There, almost directly at its center, was. <laughs> Sir Harry leaned. Leaned his head close to Fox's ear and with the keep looking at as long as he can, old man. Try not to let it get away. Then in a moment, conversation in his tone, it seemed kind of short of the filter's roar. He spoke to Arthur. Seems you have a bit of a sticky problem here. What? Archer looked up, looked up grimly from between his fingers, then carefully lowered his arms instead. He brushed himself off and made a few adjustments on his coat and tie and coat. I'm sorry, Sir Harry. I'm afraid I'd rather let it, let it get the better of me. No such thing, grinned the Sir Harry manufacturer, clapping on to the back. Besides, it's enough to rattle anyone. Gave me quite a turn myself, and I'm used to this sort of nonsense. Sir Harry had developed his, his, his dirty technique of encouragement during many a ca uh, campaign in a haunted house in a gold-ridden moor, ghost-ridden moor, and it did not fail, fail him now. Archer's return to self-possession was almost immediate, satisfied that the restoration, restoration threw him in the lift at the ceiling. You say it started as a kind of a spot, she asked, peering at the dark thing, which spread above him. About as big as a pen, answered Archer. What has the stages been like between them and now? Little bits come out of it. They get better, bigger, and at the same time, other little bits come back to now. And as if they that were enough, the whole ghastly thing keeps swelling like some damn balloon. Nasty, it's 
Mr. Anderson. It's okay. I'd say it's got to be a yard of the crust. Me too. At least. What do you make of it, sir, hey? It looks to me like it's sort of a plant. Both the butcher and our dear guest, uh, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Both Spencer and Archie Gossip are at home. The <laughs> instantly, instantly disappeared. I'm sorry, sir, said Spencer, striking. What do you mean, plain? It can't be a plain. <laughs> it's perfectly flat for one thing. Have you touched it? I just snitched. Not very likely, said. Discreetly, the butler cleared the throat. <coughs> it's on the floor, gentlemen, he said. Burr! <coughs> the three looked down at the thing with the reflective expression. It's the longest reach was now a little over four feet. No, no, said Harry. The texture of the carpet does not show through the blackness, therefore it is not like ink or some other stone. It has an ungrateful surface, independent surface. He stooped down, surprisingly graceful for a man of his size, and pulled a pencil from his pocket. Poked at the thing, the pencil ran into darkness for about a quarter of an inch, and then stopped. He jabbed another point, this time penetrating a good full inch. You see, said Sir Henry Stanley, it does have a complex kind of shape. Our eyes can perceive it only in a two-dimensional way. But the sense of touch moves it along to the third, the obvious impl implication of all this link, with and breadth business is that your plants drifted in some other, some other dimensional set, do you see? I should imagine the original spot would succeed. Am I making myself clear on this? Do you understand? Or could you not? Quite. But he gave a reasonably good imitation of the man who had. But why did the cursed thing show up here? Sir Harry seemed to have the answer for that one too. The fox interrupted it. Whatever it may have been, we shall never know it. Oh, so It's gone again! It was indeed. The carpet stretched unblended unbarnished under the, the, the three men's feet. They looked about the room somewhat anxiously now, but had found, could find no trace of the invader. Perhaps it had gone back to the dining room, said Sir Harry, but the search revealed it had not. There was no reason to assume it must confine itself to the two rooms, said Sir Henry, thoughtfully chewing his lips, nor even to the house itself. Folks standing closer to the hallway door than the others tottered slightly and then battled a strange, strangled sound. The others turned and looked to where the old man pointed. There, stretching across the striped paper of, of a hall across the door, was the dot or the plant. I don't know what it is. This is, Archer said in a choked voice, this is but too much, Sir Harry. Something simply must be done, or the damn thing will take over, over the whole bloody house. Keep your eyes fixed on it, Fox, said Sir Harry, at all costs. He turned to Archie. It has substance, so I have proven that it can be attacked. Have you have you have a large catching instrument about the place of machete or something like that? Archie pounded, then brightened, in a grim sort of way. I have Chris, he said. Get it. Said Sir Henry. Archer strode from the room, clenching and unclenching his hands. It was the longest pause, and then his voice called from another room. Another room. I can't get the blasted thing off this mountain. Mountain. I'll come and help, said Harry. Said Sir Harry answered. He turned to the fox, who was pointing at the thing on the wall. It said, Royal Bird Dog. Never falter, little girl. He said, keep your gaze rock steady. The crisp 
an old war souvenir brought to the house by Archer's grandfather was fixed but to its display panel by a completely woven ar arrangement of wires. And it took Sir Her Harry and Archer a good two minutes to get it free. They hurried back to the hall and there was a jar jolt jarring to a halt. Absolutely thunderstruck. The brah was nowhere to be seen. But that was not the worst. The butler fox was gone. Archer and Sir Harry exchanged startled glances and they called each other's name again and again with no effect. Whatever. Where can be? Where can it be, Sir Harry? said Archer. What in God's name has happened? Sir Harry manifested did not reply. He grasped the crisp before him, his eyes darting this way and that. The archer, to his horror, saw that the man was trembling where he stood. Then, with a visual effort of will, Sir Harry pulled himself together and assumed once more his usual stamped air. We must find it, Archer, he said, and his chin thrust out. We must find it and we must kill it. We may not have another chance if it gets away. Sir Harry leading the way, the two men covered the ground floor, going from room to room, but found nothing. A search of the second also found, proved futile. Pray God, said Sir Harry, mounting to the floor above. The creature had not quite quit the house. Archer, now short of breath from simple fear, climbed unsteadily after. Perhaps his gun from the way they came back from Ben. Bobby, where are you? Bobby, come on. Not now. Not after Fox, answered the other grimly. Not after Fox. I think I, <laughs> it's found its lights in my world. But what is it, said Archer? It is what I said. It was a plant without my light man, opening a door and peering into a room with revealed. A special kind of plant we have here in our dimension. At this point, Archer understood. Sir Harry opened another door and made another of the primary success. There was a chaotic lock that went up the narrow steps. Sir Harry in the lead held his crisp house high before him. Archer, by now, barely realized the eyes along the banister his hand and his breath came. Sir Harry Manson took his hand from the knob of the small door and turned to look down on his companion. That's right, he said. And the door swinging open and all unloaded to him. The thing kind of rawr. And that was it. Hope you enjoyed this story. Um, that was kind of a long one in 28 minutes. I will cut the, the, the three parts, I guess. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, video. Um, I will um, definitely think that one was pretty creepy, not, not really. It's a devouring vlog. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. But anyway. I hope you enjoyed the story, um, and what is your favorite, um, favorite horror story, um, and this could be any book, movie, television series, any, like, short story, any novella, anything, comment down below, I would like to know, and if you haven't seen my face before, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to receive notifications when I post a video. Every day is Halloween. Wahahaha. <laughs> Bye. -bye.